Well, hello, this is Jeff Gadiosi, and you're on MisplacedDraws.com, where music comes to life. And my guest today was on the show a few years back uh, when we talked about the 30th anniversary of the debut record of his band, River Dogs. But he's back now with a new band called Cross Country Driver and an album coming out on March 17th called The New Truth. It's filled with special guests, amazing songs, and trust me, it needs to be heard. Please welcome Rob Lamo. Welcome, Rob. Thank you so much. Um, thanks for welcoming me back into your world. Always. My pleasure. And before we get into the record itself, let's start with the band. Um, first yeah. of all, who joined you in Cross Country Driver, and how did you guys all get together? You know, basically, um, James Harper reached out to me and uh, said, hey, I'm a guitar player in Boston, not the band. <laughs> but uh in the city and he said you know could i just send you some kind of scratch demos or scratch guitars acoustic guitar kind of rock acoustic guitar i guess and just see if you're interested but we talked that wouldn't have probably given me enough inspiration to say yeah here's my address to be honest <laughs> but we talked about bands and music that we loved you know and we 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 ended up just having a, a couple of long, kind of long conversations about music before he ever sent me some of his ideas. And we talked about like Allman Brothers and Archangels, Badlands. Those were three like, um, you know, bands that we had in common that we were really passionate about. And yeah, so then he sent me these demos mm -hmm. and it was just acoustic some of them were just acoustic guitar they weren't some of them weren't well none of them were full songs yet actually and some of them were just kind of riffs and i picked out like three that i liked or something and i said hey can i have complete freedom to just not worry about what you think might be the chorus there were no lyrics right and uh like can i just grab parts that i think would make you know, cool sections of the song and just see what inspires me. And he was into it. And from the very first one, which was the song, I think Real Love was the first one. It ended up being called Real Love. And uh, it just felt so natural. And he really did give me the creative freedom to like arrange the heck out of the, the guitar ideas that he sent. And I liked the way he played guitar. Like if I could play like rock acoustic guitar, I'd want to play like him. You know, it 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 doesn't lose to me the way he plays acoustic doesn't lose anything in the translation from electric rock to acoustic rock. So it still had like an energy that I really liked that I've never cracked the code on. I don't know. You know, I just play like the one and the five or what yeah, the one and the five, you know, for a chord. I I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. So he knows what he's doing. And um so yeah, we were going to write like a acoustic guitar based kind of folk rock record kind of, you know, harkening back to the 70s maybe. That's what we were thinking. Sorry, I said record, but it started out just to be a couple songs. <laughs> yeah. So we really liked the first one and we tried another one. It went really well. And then on I think probably that second one, um I got my son Xander to come in. He's uh 31 now. Holy moly. <laughs> and um I just asked him if he could help me kind of figure out what, help me arrange, you know, like, could this be a verse? Could this be a chorus? And so then I grabbed a guitar and just kind of played my Neanderthal way through James's guitar ideas and then let Xander kind of say, oh, that sounds like a cool chorus, you know? And I was like, oh, okay, you know? I mean, I I really rely on him. He's kind of my my songwriting secret weapon. Because if he feels good on, you know, if he's like, yeah, this is the pinnacle of the song or yeah, no, this is the this is the the mood change or whatever. I'm, I really trust him. Right. And then I just start singing blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, rock me all night or whatever. <laughs> you know, it's just silly lyrics off the top of my head. And that's how we started. Really, then it started to become like, whoa, we got two songs in three songs in. And then it was like we should make a record, you know, <laughs> and, and let's make a collection of songs or maybe, you know, let's at least do an EP or something. So that's kind of where it, where it started. It's, it's the three of us are, are the core band. Yeah. Xander and James and I. Yeah. 
And, you know, I mentioned the special guests. Each song basically has a special guest bass player. Um, people like Greg Chasen from Badlands, Doug yeah. Bennett, Rhonda Smith, who blew me away every time I've seen her with Jeff Beck. You know, and the record was mixed by your River Dogs bandmate and bassist, Nick Brophy. Yes. How did, how did all of these other people come into the world with it? Well, like Greg Chasen um, from Badlands, he and I had always wanted to do, we did one song together uh, years ago on his solo record, a song called The River. And we'd always wanted to do something, you know, and we would, you know, we'd run into each other online or something, go, oh, we should, you know. And then, so then for me, because Badlands to me was just that debut album of theirs and everything they recorded. I saw them live a bunch of times, always in, incredible. They were a big, I mean, they were just, they're up in the top three of my favorite rock bands of all time. And Ray Gillen has to be absolutely top three rock singers in I've ever heard. So, so that, you know, it was like, well, this seems like a great opportunity, right? So we reached out to him and then, um, Doug Pinnock was like a, like a wish list thing, you know, like, again, like what a, what a voice and like, what a bass player, what a tone, such a beautiful artist, you know, and we just, we just had, uh, it was one of those things, uh, James, I think knew someone who knew him, that kind of thing, you know, and reached out and he didn't get back to us. He didn't get back to us, didn't get back to us. And then, we sent him one of the songs just without bass, obviously. And then I can't remember which song we sent him actually. Um, I can't remember what the first one was, but um, he liked my voice and he liked the song. Right. And, and um, he thought we, I guess he, he, he thought it was worthwhile. You know, he, he didn't say much that I'm aware of beyond that. Um, and then eventually we got a bass track back, you know, which was like, a really strange sounding bass track. And then we dropped in with the drums and the guitar and the vocal. It was like, oh my gosh, this is this is Doug Pinnock's bass sound. And it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's how that started. And Rhonda was just, um, you know, we were looking for like a different flavor. And, um, and I think, yeah, um, I think maybe James had worked with her before. I'm not sure. I could be wrong on that. But um, yeah, he 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 plays a lot, like on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. He knows a lot of musicians, and you know, obviously Boston is a real heavy music town. You know, it has been a music city forever. So he just has connections all over the place, and um, so that's how we got Rhonda involved. And you know, we I think Xander plays on eight songs or or so out of the thirteen, and obviously Mike Mangini on a couple. You know, he's he's pretty good. <laughs> Yeah. not bad <laughs> yeah. but the thing is um you know we didn't have a budget we didn't even when we approached those people we didn't even know we were going to make a record for sure or that it was going to be released james and i thought we might release it ourselves we we had no plan about oh well we'll go to this person or that person at that label or we didn't think about it at all which then I think really worked out because we had that starting point, like I said, Almond Brothers, Badlands, Archangels. Mm. And that was the starting point, but like acoustic versions of, of all of that. But then we, Xander took it heavier, like right, right away. He just felt everything kind of heavier than we did, probably led by James's, you know, acoustic guitar. Now that I think of it, I hadn't really thought about that before, but Xander just, you know, he he hears what's going on and then he just goes. Mm -hmm. So then we it was just getting, you know, a bit heavier as we went. And then we got super self-indulgent, you know, where a five minute song, a six minute song, whatever it was, we really were self-indulgent. But that was just freedom to create. Right. We weren't thinking about who was going to hear it. We weren't thinking about River Dogs fans or or uh, or James's fans or or any kind of genre fans we just really and you know it was the pandemic so times were weird and um you know to do something musical like that with that kind of freedom and for me to get to play with with my son Xander you know write and play with him and record with him throughout 
uh, was really, really cool. I think it, I think that was a good tonic for uh, some weird times in, in the, the pandemic, to be honest. Now, talk about the record <laughs> itself, The New Truth. For me, calling you a songwriter sells you short. I mean, you're a storyteller just of the highest magnitude as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you know, Woody Guthrie with an electric guitar. And, <laughs> you know, wow. I'm going to write song, that down. <laughs> feel free. <laughs> yeah, a song like Traces of the Truth just blows me away. I mean, lyrically, was it the the beds that you got from James that led to the lyrics, or were these things that you had floating around? None of it was floating around. I don't think, I don't think there was anything in there lyrically that was anything that had been written before. No, it was all led by the music for sure. And when I, you know, when, at some point we were like, oh, my, we were making a record. We, you know, we kind of admitted it or embraced it or whatever. And um, whatever that was going to mean, you know. But, um, you know, then at, at that point I was like, well, I don't want to just make a record. Mm -hmm. Of course we can write some beautiful songs or some great songs, well, whatever. But like, who cares in a way? It's like, to me, I'm always looking for like, what's the, what's the challenge? Um, you know, what's the challenge here beyond just writing, writing something? And I write all the time, right? So, and I do think in terms of stories. So that first River Dog, that's not the first River Dogs record, the last R River Dogs record we did in 2000, that was released in 2017, um, that was a concept album, right? Okay. So the characters on that album, those stories were all continuations of stories from the first album in 1990. Okay. So it was like, the grandchildren or the da daughter or sons of the characters from that debut river dogs album. Then I made a concept album with my, my, my youngest daughter Rose and my two sons that was released in 2018. And I'm like, Oh, I like this concept album. This is cause it's a challenge, yeah. right? It's a longer form. You're telling stories and they're inter, you know, inter, woven and sometimes across generations across the continent like with this one um and so i just went with that and i just you know a lot of it's based on stories in my own family and geography there's a lot of geography mm -hmm. that's you know i went i was literally looking like well if you were driving from you know um somewhere in tennessee and you were going on, on the way to hollywood like what would be like halfway and then what would be a little community you know 45 minutes off the highway and i was looking for you know and base again basing on real stories but kind of changing change, changing them a bit you know which i always do i always you know get a little bit poetic and try not to be completely completely literal when i'm telling real stories so um yeah so it just it just developed from there it just became this kind of multi-generational continent spanning um family history in a way you know to be honest and it's funny that you talk about the kind of the geography of the songs because i think that's one of the things that always drew me into your writing is just that journey that it brings you on you know across the country and across the continent and i think that's a very unique part of your writing is that geographical thing and with every song of yours that i love i mean like golden glow you're too rock and roll you know traces of the truth real love all all of it you always have kind of that one line that just devastates on impact and then the <laughs> rest welcome. of the story goes around it you know do you start with like do you get that one line in your head or is it something that comes to you, you know, how do you write a song yeah, no, I don't do that sort of, there's a, there's a kind of songwriter, you know, manual and, you know, starting out with a great, um, a great title or starting out with a great line. No, I never, I never do that. You know, to me, I already have a story that I want to tell. So thank you for acknowledging my desire to be a storyteller, you know? Um, so yeah, it, it, to me, the story is the most important thing. It always, it always, it's always been more important from that first River Dogs record. The story to me was more important than my singing, you know, than the vocalist. Um, and I remember doing a, 
a gig maybe 20 years ago and I had like such a bad flu. I was so sick. And there was this uh, pro musician dude that was there from Canada, a guy named Ray Lyle, a songwriter. Ray Lyle and the Storm was his band back in like the 80s. And he'd never heard me. And he just thought the songs were so great. And I could barely sing, you know. And I was like, I think that's a good thing, you know. I was like, I didn't have my voice. But the so the story still came across. And he he recognized that. So, yeah. it's To me, it's about the story. And, of course, you know, I do look for the for some potential devastating lines for sure because I love it when songwriters do that to me or or writers of any kind when they freaking push me off the cliff and I'm falling into the <laughs> oh my god I love that so much when I just get my ass kicked by great writing so you know I I try to save that though so that so the story has a, a a bit of an ebb and flow and it's not just clever lines throughout because right. that is possible too you can just you know, craft it until every word is a gem. But um, I like to have most of the words be subtle gems mm -hmm. and the lines be subtle gems. I really do try to do that. So, you know, I'm meticulous and I'm probably a little bit obsessive, but I've, I've told some people like my daughter is similarly obsessed with um words and with music and with singers and we we talk you know we talk about songwriting we you know we we trade suggestions for you know songs to hear and um so, you know songs to listen to and just yesterday we were literally driving i had a coffee she had a iced tea and we were talking about music you know mm -hmm. just both of us i was excited as a freaking 14 year old mm -hmm. you know and she's a sophisticated, hilarious 26-year-old. And we both have like kind of kid energy about, about music and songs and, and singers. And it's one of the joys of my life. She and I have been driving almost every Wednesday for probably 12 years now, 11 or 12 years, you know. And um, I hope I get to do that the rest of my life. She lives an hour away, right? I go drive in and and we have that... that uh, you know, we listen to music and we talk about all kinds of stuff. And, you know, I'm learning a lot because I spend time with a brilliant, you know, uh, uh, no, no apologies. <laughs> you know, she's, she's unapologetically um, kind, mm -hmm. unapologetically uh, progressive, you know. I, I, she'd probably cringe if I called her progressive, but she's, she's such a, such a, a humanist, you know, she's just an amazing person. And I get to spend once a week and get my, my mind blown by a 26 year old who studied anthropology at university <laughs> and women's studies and religious studies. And I just listen and learn, you know, <laughs> I have a lot of things to write about is what I'm saying. I won't run out of ideas. <laughs> that, that's always good. Yeah. It, it... <laughs> It's amazing you know, as your kids start to get older and you have different kinds of conversations with them, you know, where it can go and what it can lead to. I, that It's amazing. I love it myself. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She's challenging, right? She's been challenging me for over a decade in the car, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. on my preconceptions yeah. and my assumptions. And it's wonderful. You know, mm -hmm. it used to be so infuriating. And, uh, and now I just welcome it. I'm like... <laughs> Teach me, oh, wise 26-year-old woman. <laughs> so now with Cross Country Driver, do you see the band hitting the stage at all? I mean, like, you know, this all seems like it kind of happened organically. Have you even planned the idea of getting out there and playing? You know, we didn't. We, we, we didn't talk about it while we were writing and recording the record, which I think was again just gave us freedom we weren't thinking about playing the songs live we weren't think any of that or what bands would we play with or what gigs we want to do so you know to answer your question i mean for me i'm not as interested in um you know fronting a band mm -hmm. um you know like traveling like i've done it you know i and i love it i'm doing a little uh doing some shows in Mexico, a couple of shows in Mexico in March, and then a 
four or five city tour starting in Ottawa up here in Canada in the capital city. And, but you know, it's all small and manageable. It's like comfy, cozy, soft cedar theaters. You know, it's, um, it's pretty luxurious and, you know, I'm 64. So I don't really want to be like in a, a gear closet with a bunch of gear or like mops and buckets. And, <laughs> you know, I I've done it and I loved it, you know, and I lived it and I, puked on it and i uh, smelled like all those closets those dressing rooms you know and i wouldn't trade it for the world but now i'm sort of like oh they don't have any good coffee here shit and it's like a disaster to me <laughs> well you know with james being a boston guy hopefully you guys will come out to this area in new england you know to do a hometown show for him so uh... yeah well you know nothing is impossible yeah, yeah. And, you know, when you ask that, I'm thinking of like more like touring, which I just, mm -hmm. you know, even with River Dogs, when we did, um, we did a, a couple of shows. I don't remember what year it was. Jeez. I think it was when we released um, World Gone Mad, mm -hmm. whatever year that was, 2010. I don't know. But um, we did like four, two shows in LA and two shows in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And originally it was like, oh, we'll start in Las Vegas. We'll go, you know, San Diego, L.A., San Francisco. You know, I can't remember where else. Oh, we we're going to go to Phoenix. And the kind of tour started getting planned. And I was like, man, I've done this. I've I've done all these venues. These are the same venues I did 20 years ago. You know, and that was 10 years ago. We were talking about it. So, yeah, I mean, I love it. And I, I play guitar in a band. And and um, and uh, for my friend Logan Stotts. And his album comes out March 24th a week after the cross-country driver record of all <laughs> insane coincidences but um i was just talking to his manager this morning actually and like i like that kind of touring with no pressure i'm just playing guitar i'm in the background i'm singing harmonies his sister layla is a, is an amazing singer and you know and my son xander's the drummer in the band and it's again it's pretty you know we do like we got some festivals good you know, good sized festivals this summer. So I'll be playing a bunch of shows this later spring and summer. But um it's you know, again, it's it's so low maintenance, you know, it's like I bring a couple of guitars and my little amp. Uh, it's over there. And um, you know, and it, it's so I hate to say it's easy, but you know, it's like, this is my family on stage. We're like family, you know, we really know each other and love each other. And we all know our roles, you know, we know the songs inside out. Um, so that's, that's, that kind of touring is easier. And then I don't have to be the lead singer. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you see in your future? I mean, do you see Cross Country Driver continuing? Do you see some solo stuff playing with Logan or New River Dogs? You know, what do you see coming up? I see playing with Logan for a couple more years mm -hmm. um, because I like I like the gigs. You know, they're they're cool gigs, and um, I can see that for a couple more years. We just added another person in the band a couple of months ago, and he's this fantastic. His name's Tim Wilson, this fantastic, like multi instrumentalist, mm -hmm. you know, lap steel, mandolin, banjo, acoustic guitar, electric, baritone electric. Mm -hmm. Like he's good on everything. And he's, you know, for me, he's my replacement. And I, I, I said that to Logan, you know, I'll be 65 this August. So, you know, eventually I'm just not going to want to stand there with a guitar around my neck mm -hmm. for an hour and 15 minutes, probably, you know, and like, I'm an active person. Like, you know, I, I walk, I ride a mountain bike, I ride a road bike. Um, I'm, I'm pretty active for, for, uh, for a person of my age, but, um, and I'm, and I'm healthy, but uh, yeah, you know, it's just, I see myself easing out of that side of it. And then as far as river dogs, I mean, the thing about river dogs, we'll always work together. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Like, as you know, Vivian played and sang on one of the songs, a song called Risen on this album. Nick mixed it all, as you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that will always be uh, near and dear to my heart. We've, 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 you know, we've been such friends for so many years, you know, and, and with Mark, you know, yeah. so 
But I don't getting us together is so expensive because Nick's in Nashville, Mark's in LA, I'm up here, you know, on the Grand River, and Viv is in the you know northeast part of the of the U.S. And it just costs so much money, and mm-hmm. and no one's going to give us a a bunch of money to get together and write songs. We got to do it uh, for Frontiers, you know, when we did our mm-hmm. when we did uh, the California album. I also kind of feel like. If we just leave it, and I've told the guys this, then we kind of like, we did what we set out to do on that album 100%. And I kind of feel like, let's just leave it. That's like the cherry on this beautiful chocolate cake of the River Dogs. Why not just leave it at a high point? Because I feel like, you know, we wrote that California album in a different way than we've ever written. Mm -hmm. Usually I was, you know, kind of the, uh, writing the majority of the songs and almost all the lyrics and you know that was that was great you know and and world gone mad we kind of it was a little bit patchwork the way we did it a little bit scattered and then california we got together we never talked about how we were going to write i brought in two ideas america and uh the revolution starts tonight the first two songs in that album And then the rest of the songs, the four of us sat in a room. We had a rented house in L.A. and we just wrote the songs together. And I kind of feel like, wow, it all went so well. Let's leave it, man, because that was perfect and not the way we had written before. And it still worked so well. I was so proud of everybody, you know, like we could do it the next time. And maybe I'm just not in the mood and I'm grumpy the whole time and complaining about the coffee or whatever, whatever it is I do. No, but you know, it's like the stars aligned. Mm -hmm. It was a perfect storm to make, you know, uh, a a really good record. Yep. And that's good enough for me. I don't, you know, that's good enough for me for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cross country driver. You know, the band is, is, um, it's James and Xander and I, we shot some video and, and did some live off the floor recordings and filming uh, about two months ago now. And my friend, Justine Fisher from Hamilton, Ontario, mm-hmm. she played with us and she's a great fit. And of course, if we needed a bass player, mm-hmm. she'd be mm-hmm. absolutely perfect. Great singer, like beautiful voice. She sings on My Goodness, the 13th mm-hmm. song in the Cross Country Driver album. And um, so we'll see. Like, I would never say never, really, because, you know, if Frontier said, hey, You know, we've got one of our festivals that we're involved with. Do you guys want to come to Italy or wherever and and then play another festival a week later somewhere else and do some gigs in between? We'd have to think about that Mm because that could be really fun. So uh, I'm not going to say no, you know. (laughs) Well, we've been spending some time here with Rob Lamo. The band is called Cross Country Driver. The record is The New Truth. It's out everywhere on March 17th. Um, it, it's a fantastic record. Just a great job, Rob. Best Thank of luck you. with the record. Thank you so much for taking time to do this. You know you always got a place here whenever you have anything you need to talk about. So thank well, you very th- much. Thank you so much, Jeff. And if you ever have questions, you can just send them to me and I'll answer them. <laughs> Whatever it That's is. That's for sure. <laughs> thank you thank so you. much, my friend. Yeah. Thank Bye. you.